Welcome to the first video in the series on uh, the naming of ionic compounds. There are basically two categories of ionic compounds, type 1 binary compounds and type 2 binary com compounds. This video focuses on the naming of type 1 binary compounds. Now, what is the difference between a type 1 and a type 2? Basically, it boils down uh, to this. Your type 1 binary ionic compounds only include the cations from out of group 1A, group 2A, and then what are called the triad. And the triad cations are aluminum ion, zinc, and silver. And the way the naming works is that we always name the metal cation first, followed by the name of the anion. In the case of the cations, we use the elemental name of the metal and that will then be followed specifically by the name of the anion. What I want to do first is take you through uh, the elemental cations, alright? So this includes the cations out of group 1A, 2A, and what are called the triads. We see in group 1A that these particular metals when they undergo a chemical reaction with a nonmetal, will lose exactly one electron and take on a net charge of plus one. The group number tells you the charge on a metal cation. Group number uh, in terms of the type ones. So this would only be group one and group two. The situation is entirely dif different for transition state elements. So in the case of type ones, we have three different types of cations, the group 1A, the group 2A, and the triads. And these particular cations have fixed charges. For group 1, the charge is given by the group number. For group 2, the charge is also given by the group number. For the triad, you're just going to need to memorize the particular charge for the unique element. In the case of aluminum, it readily gives up three electrons, forming an Al plus three ion. Zinc gives up two electrons, forming Zn plus two, and silver gives up one electron, forming Ag plus. In the case of the anions, there, there will be, in, ter in, in the case of the elemental anions, there are going to be three groups that are important, 5A, 6A, and 7A, and we'll start with group 5A. Now what you need to remember about the anions is that basically they carry a negative charge because they've taken additional electrons and therefore have more electrons than they do protons. So in the case of nitrogen, it can take on three electrons and when it does, it becomes the N minus three anion. Its name is called nitride. Directly underneath it is phosphorus and it can take, it can also take on three electrons forming P minus three which is called phosphide. Okay, now we step one group to the right and we're in group 6A and there are two elements there, oxygen and sulfur, that will take electrons when they react with some type of a metal. In the case of oxygen, it will, and sulfur actually, they can take on two additional electrons. So oxygen becomes O minus two and sulfur becomes S minus two. We call O minus two oxide and we call S minus two sulfide. We step again to the right into group 7A and we see that there are going to be four elements that we have to pay attention to. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. In the case of those four elements, when they react with some type of a metal, they will take one electron, becoming uh, taking on a charge of minus one. So Fluorine becomes fluoride, or F minus one. Chlorine becomes chloride, Cl minus. And uh, bromine becomes bromide, Br minus one. And iodine becomes iodide, or I minus one. Now, in the type ones, in addition to the elemental ions, which you should have memorized, there are also um, these things called molecular ions. And these are molecules so that so you're talking about a collection of atoms bonded by covalent bonds, but in this case, they also carry a charge. There's about 24 polyanions, and they need to be memorized, and they can be found 
in usually the second or third chapter of any college chemistry textbook. I am only showing a few of the examples here. So the polyanions, the, 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 the prefix poly, is a reference to the fact that there's going to be more than one atom in these molecules. And they're anions because they've got extra electrons. So in the case of phosphate, its formula is PO4 minus 3. Sulfate, SO4 minus 2. Carbonate, CO3 minus 2. And um, my last example is hydroxide, or OH minus. There's only one polycation that we have to be concerned about, and that's called ammonium, shown here. All right, so how does the naming work? So let's do a few examples. Uh, these first couple of examples show a group 1A metal that, or 2A metal that has been paired with either 5A, 6A, or 7A elemental anions. So in the first case, we have a sodium element that has been paired with iodine. These two elements are in their ionized form. So the sodium has given up one electron becoming Na+, and the iodine has taken one electron becoming iodide. So the name of this compound is sodium iodide. Okay, next compound down. We see uh, the symbol for calcium and we see the symbol for bromine. Again, these two elements have undergone some kind of a reaction and there's been a transfer of electrons. The calcium has become calcium ion and the bromine has gained an electron becoming bromide. So the name is calcium bromide. The next element or the next compound down is barium nitride. The next compound down is potassium oxide. So the naming is straightforward. You use the elemental name of the cation followed directly by the name of the anion, the anion form of the group 5A, 6A, or 7A element. Usually students find translating from words to formulas to be harder. So what I recommend is that when you look at something like this, you first translate the words into their ions and then combine them to make the formula. So the lithium ion is Li plus, and the nitride is N minus three. All right, we use drop charge to figure out how many lithiums we need and how many nitrides we need. So this compound will be Li three N. All right, the next one down is rubidium ion, and it's being mated up with chloride. And we see that the magnitude of the charges is equal but opposite, so they combine directly. Remember, the rule of thumb for making an ionic compound is that the sum of all the charges must equal zero. All right, the, the, the formula that we end up writing down needs to be uncharged. So that means that when we combine these ions, they have to, they have to sum to zero. All right, the next one down is strontium, and it's being combined with oxide. And again, we see that the two charges, the magnitude of the two charges is the same, but they're opposite, so they combine directly. And then the last one is uh, cesium oxide, so it's Cs plus being paired up with O minus 2. We, drop the, we use drop charge to bring the two down, and the cesium has a one that goes here. So the compound is going to be CS2O, like that. Okay, now, in my final examples, what I'm showing you here is what happens when we combine a group 1A or group 2A or triad cation with a polyanion, all right? So the naming is straightforward. We use the elemental name of the cation followed by the, uh, followed by the polyanion. So in this case, the name will be lithium carbonate. And the next one down is calcium phosphate. The next one down is barium sulfate. And the next one down is sodium hydroxide. Now you can see what I was talking about earlier. You must have the names of the polyanions committed 
uh, to memory because if you don't, you can't do what I just did as I went down through this list of formulas. Okay, and again, translating from name to formula usually is harder. So what you want to do first in this is is to generate the symbols of the respective ions. So the first one is potassium ion and it's being paired up with sulfate. We use drop charge so the formula will be K2SO4. The next one down is magnesium carbonate so Mg plus 2 and CO3 minus 2. Magnitude of the charges is the same but opposite so it'll be MgCO3. Next one down is sodium ion being paired with phosphate and phosphate carries a minus 3 charge. When we do the drop charge we see that it will be Na3PO4. And last is uh, barium hydroxide so Ba plus 2 and OH minus. Now in this case when we do the drop charge you see that the, the subscript is going to be next to a polyanion so we have to use a parenthesis and the two goes here.